G'day, it's Greg Clark here from the Centre for Public Christianity and my guest today is Professor Craig Detweiler of Pepperdine University in California where he's a Professor of Communication and his area of interest is spirituality and culture. Craig, welcome to CPX. Thank you, Greg. I hear you're here on holidays. Uh, it's obvious, isn't it? I've been uh, up in the Daintree, out on the Great Barrier Reef and now here in Sydney. Now your area of interest is finding God in popular culture. What do you mean by that? Um, well, uh, God has always spoken through unlikely means, you know, whether that was uh, talking, you know, through uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, you know, Babylonian king. Uh, now I find he's speaking through people like Jim Carrey in a film like Bruce Almighty, right? It's just as seemingly unlikely. And yet there it is. Right what is he us. saying through Jim Carrey? Um, well, in, in the case of Bruce Almighty, I think he's at, challenging us to maybe not take on the role of God in our own lives, to not try to run our, the world, to realize how complex things are and to maybe give some of that power back to the divine rather than to make ourselves into the divine. Are you saying that you find God wherever you look in popular culture or is it certain kinds of films or books or music that, that dig into the spiritual Well, questions? I find it's the more enduring film, right? It's the film that is, is got some depth. It's, it's, it's an artist or a songwriter who's really mining the, uh, the soul of humanity and, and what it's like. So, What's yeah. the latest film that you saw that does this sort of thing? Um, well, I enjoyed uh, po summer popcorn film like Terminator Salvation. You know, the, the, it's right there in the title, Terminator Salvation. It, it deals with uh, how you essentially atone for mistakes you've made in the past. And uh, it's about self-sacrifice. It was quite surprising and uh, pleasurable. Okay, so there are things that can bring a viewer to reflect more deeply on life. But I think religious people are often caricatured as just being against films because they've got too much sex, too much mm -hmm. violence, too much swearing. Is that a fair caricature? Well, we have been known as the people who are against things, you know, I, and I guess I'm trying to figure out what we should be for. And so I'm actually finding uh, films and art that, uh, that we should be supporting, that we should be encouraging, you know, whether that's a, a popular film like The Matrix or, um, you know, artists of, of depth. I loved The Clash growing up as a youngster. I was challenged by a film like Raging Bull to look at the violence tendencies in my own life and came to faith really through looking at, at that R-rated film. So I found that you can find the sacred even amidst the profane. That's not a popular message. I mean, your, your latest book, I think it's called Into the Dark, which is looking at the sacredness of the top films of the 21st century. What kind of things are you finding in these top films? Well, if you look at uh, the Internet movie, movie Database, which uh, is really a global survey of film lovers, uh, you'll find that in the 21st century films, you, you, uh, an artist like Christopher Nolan, who directed uh, Memento and, and Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, he's dealing with uh, kind of this dark side of, of all of us, this capacity we have to deceive ourselves, um, how you might have to wrestle with your own demons to kind of get to the other side. Even with Memento, what kind of fictions we'll tell ourselves. I find that he deals with really original sin in a very profound way. So I find the next generation understands sin. I think they understand evil. They've seen 9-11. They've, they've understood kind of that, that people do crazy things. But what they is more elusive, I think, is the, the notion of hope. I find that to be uh, uh, in short supply, even in the best films. I've heard the cinema referred to as the cathedral of our times. Is it true that people need to sort of get into the darkness and sit down and reflect uh, that we're rushing too much in our lives and film gives us a chance to kind of put ourselves in other people's shoes and think about our lives? Yeah, well, it is a vicarious experience. It allows you to sit back and sort of um, uh, look at someone else's choices and their moral dilemmas and what kind of decisions they make. You look at a film like uh, Lord of the Rings, which is actually the highest rated film in the 21st century amongst um, you know, young people. And uh, that's really an, uh, kind of an ancient Christian story uh, that's been gussied up by Hollywood with special effects. But you look at what it's about. It's about uh, resisting temptation. And how do you do it? You can't do it alone. It says right there in the title, you need a fellowship. And, and, you, and you can't do it really as just one type of people. You need, you know, dwarves and elves and, and trees, right? You need the ants on your side. So it's about coming together to resist uh, this temptation and to um, find a peaceful future for the Shire. 
Now you're a person of faith yourself and I know that one of your projects has been an autobiographical documentary with an old college roommate of yours. Tell us a bit about that project. Right, well it's called uh, Purple State of Mind. We took it from this uh, red state, blue state tension in America that's characterized a lot of arguing about faith and, and the public square. And we've tried to, to say, you know, those things don't need to be at odds with one another, but they, they can actually be reconciled. It's similar to the work you do here at the Center for, uh, you know, for, for Public uh, Christianity, is that right? That's right. Um, purple state of mind, uh, I, my first year in the faith was my roommate's last year in the faith in college. And so we're looking at what happened back then, looking at those questions of faith and doubt as a way into getting past this cultural divide that we've had in America and maybe even some of that tension that you've experienced here in Australia as well. I think it's too uncommon that uh, Christians are seen as being honest and open to dialogue and open to criticism in the public square. Mm, well, you know, I, the film isn't really about winning or losing for me. It's about uh, honesty. It's about uh, telling the truth. It's about admitting your faults. Um, and uh, I think walking with a certain graciousness, a certain humility, and uh, unfortunately that's been in short supply. Craig Detweller, thanks very much. Thank you so much, Greg.